Welcome everyone. Good evening to you. Glad to have you here at the Ignite Institute. So just a couple words before we uh, introduce our speaker and we really get deep into the work. Um, I want to tell you that there has been a lot of work that's happened since we met here last about a month ago, not quite, not quite a month ago. We hosted a business leader roundtable here in this space where we invited business leaders from our county to come together and go through some of the work that you're going through right now in terms of we asked them what are your workforce needs how is your business sector your industry changing at this point in time what do you see in the future and what are the competencies that you would want to see in future employees that you may hire so we're going to bring that information to the table tonight so you can see that so that'll be very interesting we also today had a meeting the final meeting of our school district ambassadors. We have a group of uh, parents that are very connected, very involved in their schools, very active, and we invited them to come in and they met once a month with us essentially for the past nine months to learn more about our school system and how our school system operates for a twofold purpose. One is to help them understand more about how our system works so they can share that with other people, but also so that we can have much more parent engagement and get more of our parents involved in programs like that. So they feel very connected. They feel like they really understand how the system works and how we do what we do for our students. So also I want to mention that our principals have been hard at work with a few things. We've had some of our students provide input to this process as well. So in some of the packets you're going to see information where some of our high school, middle school students, we may even have a few elementary school students that put their two cents worth in on what they think are important competencies for their future. So it's good to have parent voice for that uh, coming to the conversation. So just a quick summary on that piece. We want to make sure that we have one vision for our school, and we want to prioritize and identify these competencies moving forward and have context for what the relevance is of these competencies that we have. So I just also want to remind you as a group, as we're talking about competencies, we want to make sure that we provide a world-class education for our kids. We want to make sure they're very strong in the core curriculum and in the elective classes they choose to take. But we also want to paint the picture for them of some of the competencies that they need to be to have to be successful in the future as well. Maybe it's some of those non-cognitive things that are not taught directly in a classroom, but they could be taught directly if we identify them as a group and we work on that process. So that's part of our work moving forward. So on that note, just here to close, I want to share a quote from Alexander Graham Bell. He said this. He's the Scottish-born inventor, scientist, engineer. It's very appropriate for our work tonight here as well. Great discoveries and improvements invariably involve the cooperation of many minds. So that begins our work tonight. So let me uh, welcome Steve Fuji here, our facilitator. Thank you very much. It's all right. I, I, I think he absolutely deserves a round of applause. Thank you very much, Mr. Superintendent. You quote Alexander Graham Bell. I'm going to try this. Oh, maybe. All right, sorry. You, you said it. I'm of the age where that, that resonated with me, the Electric Avenue conversation. Uh, uh, our superintendent has talked about the purpose of being here this evening and why everybody's here. No one's in this room by accident. In fact, he's really attempted to elevate as many of the voices throughout this community and this school district as humanly possible. Each person in this room is represented in some way on the graphic in front of you as we think about coming uh, uh, in Boone County to a new vision. Uh, a couple of notes, if I may, about your superintendent. This is not a requirement, as I know it, by either the Board of Education or the State of Kentucky or, or the Federal Department of Education, as it were, on Boone County. This is a project of or process of the superintendent asking, really, what the stakeholders in the community want to see for our students. Because, you know, if we rely on traditional metrics, we get a different result than we might be talking about this evening. A reminder, you have a couple of uh, uh, gifts or uh, things at your table. Uh, we'll refer to those throughout the evening. The leadership team in this district has specifically uh, compelled me to make sure that I uplift certain uh, items in that packet, and we will talk about those things. And as always, everybody's voice is really important. Our first meeting, I did a ton of talking, and since that time, I have tried to really step back and just provide a mirror 
That is my intent this evening as well. But in order to be able to do that, I need folks to be able to be willing to engage with the portal. Uh, I've talked about being a degree off. I don't want to be a degree off. I want to make sure that what I'm reflecting back to you is in fact what you are saying. One of the highest uh, appreciated or most appreciated things uh, in these evenings has been the chance to get to know somebody else in the community. Uh, last time, if you remember, our first time together actually, we talked about a schooling experience that resonated with you in your workforce today. Uh, if you were a student, you talk about a favorite lesson that you undertook or that sticks with you as a student. Last time that we were together, we talked about the power of language. We talked about, and, and I call this my one word, I, I try to read 100 books every year and I start my year with the same book titled My One Word, and we drew pictures of um, insects or we talked about chores that we had to do and then we wrote down the, the name of a maternal figure that has inspired us in our life and we talked about the power of that word. Today I'd like to invite you to the extent possible to pull out the device, look at a photo, we all carry picture, uh, cameras in our, I'll tell you having the last name Fuji in the 80s and the 90s was really cool because Fuji disposable cameras and it was always about pictures. Now everybody has uh, uh, cameras at their disposal. Here's the invitation this evening. If you're in the room intentionally, let's meet somebody new in the room. Uh, our superintendent and his staff have done a great job of trying to seat the, uh, groups at tables, but the chance is to meet somebody new and to get to know somebody. So if you would, we could do this a number of ways. You could go back to your fifth picture and try to explain it. That may not always work out well. Uh, or you could come up with a favorite picture, a picture of your family, and you're just going to meet somebody new, say, hi, my name is Steve, I'm in here because I have kids wherever and whatever, or I'm a business person, and my favorite picture on my device or my picture on my device is this. Meet somebody new. Any questions with the prompt? This is always one of the things that, that you all have said, I like the chance to meet another person in the room. Questions? Here's my hope. My hope is we'll have somebody who will introduce us to a new friend. My hope is in this moment we'll have, we'll have somebody introduce us to a new friend. I've done this a lot of times and I certainly recognize our teachers last time maybe took the gold star in terms of the teachers wanted to be the ones that really shared out the most, which was exciting. So I'll start off and we'll see if we'll have a new leader going into the clubhouse. Maybe I'll use this analogy. We'll have a new Kentucky entering the bracket. And we'll, thank you very much for that kind of laugh. I really, it was a stretch. I know it was a stretch. Uh, but if we could have a, an external agent, a business partner, a parent, or someone who isn't directly tied with the schools uh, on their daily, on their day-to-day -day job, uh, if they wouldn't mind coming up and saying who they met and what the image was they shared. Oh, boy. Yes, please, and thank you. I think we have the, I think the microphone is on, and if you just want to even point to the person, yep, it's on. I met Mike Wilson from Connor Cooper. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Mike, dear. you should raise your hand like, here I am. Can I start over? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And his picture was of a graduation. Um, the picture I guess you're going to put on your... Yeah, social media because they decided on the date for your senior graduation of all your schools, right? Okay. So. Exciting. A round of applause, please. How about an educator, somebody who met somebody new who's an educator? Would you come up and introduce us to that individual? I feel like sometimes I'm, I don't mean to. An educator, somebody on the inside of the school system who might introduce us to somebody new in the room. Thank you. We'll take it. You don't have to feel compelled just because you're sitting there, but thank you. I'm, I'm always willing to talk. I'm Sarah Neesmith from Rise Academy. I met Mrs. Black here. She is a very new grandmother, hey, so she showed me a picture of the baby. Yes. And she works for LSS at the district elementary level. Thank you very much. And then our third stakeholder group, is there a student who would be willing to come up and share who they met and what the image was? I know there's at least three in the room because I've met them. Thank you. I know we, it seems like you uh, talk every meeting and we certainly value it, so thank you very much.
so I suppose I uh, met someone I kind of already knew, but I didn't get the chance to talk to him at the last meeting. It was our, um, gosh, why is the award slipping my name now? Or slipping my mind now. Um, I got, to, got the chance to speak to Ballet Shannon educator who was also the who also received the uh, good news award that I'll, I'll just I'll just call it that for right the now good news award. um so that that was very exciting and I know he told me his favorite picture was one of him and his wife at the Super Bowl he got the chance to go actually go to the Super Bowl and see the Bengals play which was exciting to hear about um I know it was and it was definitely it was great to get the chance to talk with uh, talk with them and talk about like why I mean that's a great experience to get to see I know all of Cincinnati was buzzing so getting the chance to actually go and see them in person thank you very much a round of exciting. applause please <laughs> all right the intent in doing that is not necessarily by accident we, we start out by talking about experiences that we hope for students that was our introductory activity in our first meeting we moved on to the power of words and language and why those words need to resonate or what we want for them and tonight we talked a little bit about kind of some of those images. The reason that I do those extension activities is because that's where we hope to move with your input tonight. Uh, having had the chance to talk with uh, our Superintendent Turner and some putting together some work for some business community and for the students to engage in uh, this portrait work, a conversation came up with the leadership team around how is it that we really describe this. And I, I do want to take just one second here. Uh, I think that a tremendous amount of work in this community, no, I don't think, let me start that again. There has been a tremendous amount of work in this community around academic content standards and bringing the best educationally for students. If I reflect back on our first evening together when we talked about those deeper learning experiences that resonate with us from year to year to year that we carry with us in our personal lives, oftentimes, that means something different. That means we heard about grit and tenacity from our athletes. We heard about academic rigor and expectations and relationship building in some AP courses. We heard about a teacher who just believed in me and that had that experience. Those opportunities matter and, and when combined with academic rigorous experiences lead us to this concept of deeper learning. That is measurable. That is something that can be aspired to for a school district. The opportunity ahead of us is to become clearer on those deeper learning experiences. What are the skills necessary in Boone County that elevate these experiences for our students? We certainly could do that work with just educators. We could sit educators down at an in-service day and ask them these things. And ultimately, we would hear some of the things that we're going to hear tonight. We could do that only with the business community and like my friend up here, a building administrator said, we could do that just with the students and hear different outcomes. I think part of this process is that we get to elevate everybody's voice equally in an attempt to better understand what the expectations are for our students moving forward, for our parents who love their children, and for our educational community and business leaders who want the most as we look at the economic impact in this footprint. So all of these things go together with deep, rigorous academic content. Never, ever should we not think, uh, too many negatives there, absolutely rigorous academic content has to be at the basis of this. Educators have been focused on that since the Committee of Ten in 1893. We continue to get better at that. But that doesn't necessarily by itself lead us to deeper learning. We focused on these conversations uh, over our time together. And tonight, we're going to talk about a shared vision. Specifically this evening, we're going to have the chance to identify and contextualize competencies that should be part of this shared local vision for our community's portrait. Another way, another change management strategy for my business partners in the room is the CEO will read a book by Jack Welch or by Steve Jobs or Walter Isaacson, and they'll bring in this new idea and they'll say, here are the five most important key parts of business. This is what we're going to focus on now, top down kind of driven change management. Certainly, in education, we've been guilty of that as well. The four C's are essential for all schools. Uh, critical thinking, creativity, uh, collaboration, and communication. These are the ways that we're going to go. 
the authenticity here is that we're asking for your input so that that's a local conversation. It's not something that somebody else is necessarily driving. This isn't intended to be contrived by me or by my organization. It's only intended to reflect back what you as a community say. In order to reflect back what you as a community say, it's also important that I'm candid about feedback. Uh, what, I, what went well last time is the interaction with one another that was effective and uh, timely. Today, the goal came, became much clearer. Uh, and bringing together people in the same room uh, and allowing courage and sharing. Let's be honest, what can be improved? Uh, actually, the gentleman up here said it as well. More stakeholder voices. How do we engage more people in these conversations? Nothing will change. Uh, have a definite end time. Actually, our superintendent's going to give us a pass on that here in a little while, and I'm really excited to be able to share that because not only will we start on time, but we will end on we'll end early. And then questions and wonders. Here we go. Just hoping that we'll continue to narrow our focus so that we become sharper about our vision. And how do we choose specific improvements to address? I love this question, and it comes up no matter where I am, because the question itself is about an individual who is solutions driven. We just tell us the answer, Steve. Let us move forward. Let's execute on whatever that solution is. And the good news about that is, well, and maybe it's the bad news. I don't have the solution. The solution is actually here in the room. The smartest person in the room is actually the room itself or the people who get to weigh in on that. That's what uh, the intent here is. And how will all of this end up benefiting our school? What overall effect are we making? I think, oh no, and I'm going to back up to this one real quick, because this process is actually a student-oriented outcome process that will drive the strategic plan moving forward. Uh, Boone County has a strategic plan that is sunsetting, and going into this summer, after we have a student-driven target, we'll start the strategic planning process moving forward. So it will be grounded and rooted in what this community says. When we started, we talked about the landscape shifts. This data is for you in your packet. I believe it's on page 12. We talked about them in four critical areas. And last meeting, you got to see the local rating of how 192 or 182, I forget what the actual end size was, in this community uh, ranked those. You had a chance to connect, extend, or challenge some ideas that were up there. Just like we had a roll call before, we had people who come, came up and also shared what connected with them and extended or challenged them. One of the things that was obvious was the human interaction piece was critical. No surprise coming off of COVID, moving from a pandemic into an endemic and thinking about learning loss and opportunities for students. All of that in the service of deeper learning. Actually, I, sh I should pause here and just let that that description sink in for a moment. Deeper learning occurs through the purposeful integration of rigorous academic content with experiences that intentionally cultivate skills, mindsets, and literacies to essential for students to contribute uh, to the 21st century. And recognizing that not all, not all students look like us. The conversation then turned to what were the competencies necessary for us? And several of you, as I made my way around the room, pushed me on this idea. What are the competencies necessary for consideration? Steve, not all these things can be measured. Steve, not all, the, all, not all these things are necessarily distinct from one another. Steve, how do we focus on these areas? All of which are fair questions, but if we want to come up with something locally driven, we just started out with my language. I do not pretend like my language is going to be the language that ends up being the local answer here in Boone. So uh, Superintendent Turner talked about the job he specifically has done in trying to elevate everybody's voice. So I, I think this is a really unique thing, and I, I want to take just a moment here. Uh, again, I, I think there's like 182 names on the roster on the back of your uh, guide. And I think that those 182 names have been here from time to time over the last couple of meetings. Um, not all of them have ne necessarily weighed in because on our individual competencies, last time we had an end size or a population of 102 people who weighed in on that. Then, this made a ton of sense to me because there were 27 tables in the room that evening. And we had 27 folks weigh in on what those ideas were 
once you had a chance to discuss it. So at the beginning, I got a chance to kind of reflect on what all this meant for me, and then I had a chance to talk about that at my table. So all 27 tables turned in a response to that. Above and beyond that, the superintendent went out and met with the business roundtable uh, and, and brought the same type of information to them and allowed them to weigh in. So these are business leaders in the community. And then they followed the same protocol that you did. They had a, a roundtable discussion about that. So there were three tables that input their information. And we had student considerations. So all, and actually we're going to have in the neighborhood of I think 350 6th through 8th graders and somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 and some odd uh, 9th through 12th grade uh, folks who engaged with this. Is that 27,000? It's not. But is it an effort to at least engage our stakeholders to elevate their voice and find out where our through lines are, where there's some consistency? This data, because I'm going to go through it, not quickly, but this data is, because it's not the easiest thing to read up here either, is printed for you in your handout. Uh, I just want to kind of talk through some of these ideas. As you think about in this room, you saw out of that 102 individuals, I took 20% and above and said, our top rated idea was communication. Let's start with our individual votes first. And empathy and how do these things relate back to our landscape shifts. We then looked at the same data from you as you thought about these topics in your table groups. From a free text standpoint, this is reflecting back the conversations you had as tables. How many folks said communication? Uh, a quick note here, especially for my teachers and my curriculum folks in the room. Elevating communication as a skill does not mean that communication skills are not being taught in Boone County. In fact, if I have any freshman English teachers in the room, they might want to throw an object at me if I were to say otherwise. Communication skills, speaking, listening, reading, writing, now texting, Snapchatting, video skills are taught, absolutely taught. What this is doing is calibrating what we think is our most important ideas as a group. Certainly, one of the steps, and we'll actually talk about it next time, is where do these things happen a lot? In your, the community, in church, faith-based organizations, in school classrooms that you're aware of, uh, in student organizations, in school debate teams, uh, in the power of the pen in middle school. Where do these things happen? That will be part of the conversation next time, but we first want to get to the ideas that are most important. I'll also specifically talk for one moment here about empathy. In many communities today, empathy is one where that is often seen as a parent right. Don't teach my kid about empathy. That's my job to do. Your job is to teach reading, writing, and arithmetic or these other ideas. Here, the idea of empathy, which I think is quite unique, especially in a district this size, was elevated as one of the top most important things that we think about in the short term, preparing students for it. A parent pushed me last time, Steve, how do we prepare students for that? Maybe it's something as simple as we have a commonly held definition throughout our community about what this means, and that when we talk and meet with parents, we have common expectations for that. It can mean a lot more, but I'm saying at a bare minimum, if it's something that's important to us, and it seems like it is, then how do we have conversations around it? Interestingly as well, look at this, the business community also rated it as their second most important idea. An end size of 17 and yet 10 individuals of the business round table saw that as important. Right, that's fascinating to me. Because you often think of business leaders, CEOs, HR managers as being about the bottom line. That hey, it's about efficient production of a widget, whatever that widget is. And yet, we're talking about the idea of how do I relate with one another. At the end of the day, that's all empathy is. Empathy is about perspective taking in somebody else's shoes. And our business leaders are even saying that's critical for us to consider. And then finally, they had a chance also to talk about that as a group. So 
three of the three tables in that space also elevated that as a consideration. I, I know I'm flying through this. I, the reminder is you have this in your, in your packet as a handout because I'm almost done talking, for which there should be a round of applause. Anyway, uh, then finally, the opportunity existed for our students to weigh in. Some of the administrators in, in this district took the additional responsibility of bringing this to their uh, student population. Now, there's something unique here. I highlighted the top two for the two grades. Um, so for our students, the ones that they thought were the top two most important were communication and confidence. I had to go all the way down to confidence. Confidence actually doesn't show up in the other areas, but it did for our middle school students. And when I think about that, I find that to be fascinating because our eighth grade kids that are sitting in eighth grade today, two years ago when they were finishing up their sixth grade year, they were sent home from school. So I guess in the one hand, when I think about what those students have been through over the last two years, I'm not surprised by that. But I love the fact that the students thought that was so important and it wasn't necessarily seen elsewhere throughout the system. Uh, and then our high school students, uh, where their end size was at 124. Communication, again, is right there. And then uh, it's this idea of responsibility. And I, 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 I would be remiss if I also didn't talk about the fact that responsibility for a high school student to elevate, like I wonder, is this the AP class that took it? Like, because they get responsibility. I don't, I don't know who the students are who took it, 9 through 12, but for that to be the second most important idea for them, like gosh, that says something to me about the students who took the survey and at least wanted to weigh in on their own ideas. Now. All of that said, that's a ton of data for, for uh, me. I, I presented it to the leadership team, and we talked about how best to provide that to you. Here in a moment, we have what we're calling in this moment a recommended set. The opportunity is for you to weigh in on that recommended set. The opportunity here in a moment is to see if we're missing something. So said a little bit more simply, these ideas, this table has three columns. In the first column, in the left column under core, it would be hard to make an argument against these ideas because they were pretty consistent across all of the data sets. The idea of communication, the idea of empathy, critical thinking and problem solving, adaptability in a learner's mindset. Here's what I love about this. This kind of, and, and, and there was no manipulation of the data. This is, you, you can see the data sets. This is how it turned out. But what I love about it is if I look here at communication and empathy, these are things that I show outwards. I have to be solid enough in my ability to uh, uh, be a student and be a person to demonstrate those things outwards. Critical thinking and problem solving, those are my academic core content. Those are the things I have to be able to do to learn, to grow, and to contribute. And then these ideas of adaptive, so we have kind of extrinsic, intrinsic, and then relational. Oh, or, I'm sorry, uh, 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 kind of growth mindset ideas of adaptability and learner's mindset. How everything's changing and evolving and I want to make sure that I can be flexible in dealing with that. I think it's fascinating that it's so well balanced. There is no, there was no intent on my side to necessarily do that. That's how the data came out and it, it's remarkable. And I think that it, we would be remiss if I just said those are your six core competencies. Now tell me what those things mean here locally because these other ideas weren't far off, but they're, they're, they're pretty closely uh, related. So the idea of communication and collaboration might go together. I'm not saying they do, I'm saying they might. The idea of empathy and leadership might go together. Critical thinking and problem solving might seem like the same thing. I'll tell you, parents by and large say that I want my kid to be a problem solver. Teachers by and large will say I want my kid to be a critical thinker. The two ideas that go with that that were highly uh, ranked also were this idea of te technology and financial literacy. And then you see the other areas. I'm going to stop here for a moment because this is where I'm going to turn it over to you to start to discuss first if, there's, if these seem or feel right. I'm not asking you to define all of them. I'm not asking you to look at all of them. I'm saying do these, whoa, whoa. whoa. Do these core competences seem or feel right? If there's something missing from the other, let's talk about what those things might be. 
before because in a moment, what we're going to do is create the local context for those things here. Not, not Steve's language that he brought to us that is artificial. What are those core ideas here? Que and we'll do that first at the table. Questions about the prompt. Do these things make sense? Is there something missing that's not being considered? That, that's really the first question. Take a few moments. Go ahead, weigh in. I've been doing too much talking. I'm sorry for that. It's now your turn. So what just happened is I get the chance to go around and be challenged and ask questions about, well, where do these things come from? Tell me what this word means. Why are they categorized this way? And I see that the real conversations really are happening at the table. I love that. Absolutely love that. And recognize that that's part of the reason that the comments come in so strongly about the chance to work together. What I would say in this moment, actually I'm not going to say in this moment, I'm going to invite uh, some folks, and we won't go by role group. It, that, it seems to fall flat or artificial, and you all it may not like that, I don't know. But I would invite, if somebody's willing to come up and discuss what was shared at your table group, that would benefit us. I think hearing from one another, that would benefit us. And I'm really hopeful, yes please come on up, I'm really hopeful that somebody who's going to talk about LinkedIn and Indeed.com and competencies might also come up. Yes ma'am, please share what you talked about. And you shared last time, didn't you? Yes you did. There's the microphone, the stage is yours. Yeah, sure. What, did you say move it up? Yeah. You want it up on stage. Yeah, all right, everybody take out your cell phones. No, 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 don't, don't turn on your camera, but get your flashlight out. We want a spotlight right here. Here we go. Go ahead. So my table talked about multiple different topics, but the main one that was brought up was empathy, and I believe, like, learner's mindset. For empathy, I, I, my sister and I both come from a background of being in a Montessori school. Um... She's the, student, she's the student board representative, but um, she, her, she and I both come from a Montessori, mm -hmm. where we were taught like empathetic, mm -hmm. emp empathy skills, and I learned at public school they just don't do that. It's not something that's necessarily taught. Now, some individual teachers might if it comes into their lesson plans, but it's not necessarily a school-driven or system-driven idea. I agree. Thank you very much for that vulnerability. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Did you have another? I'm sorry, did I interrupt? Yeah. Um, oh, I interrupted. I apologize. It's fine. I have been bullied at every single public school I've gone to, which tells you how little people actually care. It tells me that we have some work to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. And people... Another thing that I brought up was responsibility because I'm, I'm in sixth grade. There's 11, 12, and some, even some 13-year-olds who are acting 7 and 8. Mm. And, and they haven't learned how to communicate properly because of that time gap from, mm -hmm. like, from fourth grade. From two years ago yeah. till today. From fourth or third grade, if mm -hmm. they skip the grade or something, to now. Okay. And they never learned how to function normally in society because of that gap where we all had to stay home. We were we had to wear masks, and I still wear mine because that's what I feel comfortable with. Very nice. Yeah. It's the choice. Personal now. advocacy is something that we learned here. Yeah. So Lee, is it Lee or Leah? Lee. Lee, here's what I would say to you. The good thing about those sixth graders is we still have six years with them left in our system, and we have some work to do based on that. So I hear your advocacy around empathy, responsibility, and continuing our learner's mindset. Um, I. We're gonna we're gonna invite some other folks up. Can I? Yep. Okay. Um. So there is someone. I've been in a toxic relationship, not like romantic relationship necessarily, but a friendship with someone else who used me to get stuff. And then another one of their friends started harassing me online, which goes along with, they don't know how to be empathetic towards others. 
think your initial conversation around, and I'm sorry for that. Let me be honest. I think your initial, you don't have to go anywhere yet. I think your initial conversation on that about starting with empathy and talking about it at a Montessori school, that is something that's widely discussed. We talk about the Beatitudes, we talk about different things there. Where in public school, sometimes that, that takes on a different flavor. But the, the result is that it, it influences the experience of students so differently. So is it time to have that conversation as a district based on those experiences? And so for that, I say thank you very much for being willing to share it. Thank you, Lee. It's not always easy. It's not always easy to be able to be a student and come up and share those types of experiences. And I do greatly appreciate it. That's not lip service. It's the opportunity to engage and be in front of really a lot of intimidating adults from time to time. Other observations, so I hear Lee advocating the learner's mindset and empathy. Other adults or, uh, no, other conversations around what you talked about at your table, if somebody would be willing to come up and share. We can move this down too. You don't have to be up here necessarily. Thank you, sir. Come on up. And I'm, I'm not going to act like I know anything. I'm going to leave this right here and let you talk. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Ben Hartline. I'm a junior here at Ignite. Um, so looking at this list, our group had a good conversation about perseverance, and we all tended to agree that it should move up. Uh, another interesting point I would like to talk about is financial literacy. And on behalf of, like, students my age, it seems like there's a push, like, or a uh, letdown when everybody's sitting in math class and it's like, dang, we're learning this math, but we don't know how to do our taxes. So on one hand, I see the bias, though. It's really only ever in calculus that people want to learn more about financial literacy to get out of that stuff. <laughs> but at the same time, I do think that it should be higher on the list, and I do think that a lot of high school students agree that it should be higher up. So let's well, keep that in mind. Actually, and I'll tell you what, Ben, a student actually made a comment in the poll itself about, well, somebody just tell me how to do my taxes. And we shouldn't be surprised because today's March 15th, which is traditionally a tax day. So thank you very much for that statement. I can concur. And, and Ben, I don't think that's just our students in calculus who want to be able to do that. They want to see the relevance of math and be able to apply it in things that they understand every day. Other observations, I haven't, at least with the two students that have come up so far, I haven't heard anything about things being missing, but I have heard some challenges. Are there any other uh, ideas that you talked about at your room, or at, at your room, at your table within the room about these, these competencies? Had somebody at a back table talk about, gosh, they're all important. And as an Ohio State Buckeye fan, when we try to run two quarterbacks and try to treat them equally, if they're both quarterbacks, we wind up losing. Any other observations at tables? I'll just pull on this other one thread about uh, two threads. One was about measurement. I'm having a hard time, Steve, seeing what things in here can be measured. And I'll agree with that. I will agree with that. But I'll also say if the community believes that these things are important, that's the value of a strategic plan, or that's why we go into a strategic planning process. The second thing that I'll say is uh, folks talked about these being very buzzword-esque. And I own that 100%. In fact, the analogy was given that, hey, deed.com, a, a job site, has an algorithm where the artificial intelligence is taught to look for certain key words. It seems like all of these are the key words that uh, indeed.com is intended to search. Okay, I think that's very valid. And as, as I've said, these are my words right now. What I want to be able to do is to invite you to create that local context. What do those things mean here? Again, I'm, I'm not pretending that, that the two students who spoke or the two comments that I just shared are representative of the whole body. But I do want to invite your feedback on those ideas. So. Here's how I'd like to do that. Instead, we were going to do three rounds of this. Oh, 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 one other thing. Just to, whoops, just to allow you to really think about this. So the portrait of a graduate is a device. It's a framework. It's, it's, it's something that empowers the educators to say, here's where our focus is. It provides focus. A vision, as our superintendent said. 
the, the language that goes on that, whether it's a portrait of a graduate, a profile of a learner, expectations for students, whatever it is, deeper learning competencies for Boone County, whatever the title is. The title portrait of a graduate is just something that, that, that's ours, that we sell, that we say is important, but it can be what matters here. The ideas that are embedded here could be, uh, and, and, and there are examples like strength of heart, strength of mind, strength of will. And so the image is a, a person and they're pointing to these different things. Uh, and they could be grouped like that. They could be grouped anyway. Uh, I just put them down here on a chart because it's, they seemed to make sense to me and the leadership team based on that. The invitation for you is to think about those ideas. So I'll ask you to really focus on those. So for instance, group three, and I'll come back to my student table right here, right straight back to the gentleman in black uh, with the, the nice quarter zip pullover. Over. I'm going to call you guys group three. And I'm going to ask you at your table groups to really focus on the competencies of adaptability and learner's mindset. What are the things that matter? Which of these words resonate? Is there a different term that should be used? I'm going to ask both of those. Talk about, I'm going to share with you the poll that from that line of demarcation, if you will, oh, these two rows, so tables 10, 17, 25, 29, 28, and forward, I'll invite you to be group two. The idea of kind of critical thinking and problem solving. Focus on those. What words resonate? What words don't? How do we consider these things? Should they be named something different? Uh, we heard from Ben talk about financial literacy and technology literacy. Can we incorporate those in here? If so, how? If, you're, if your conversation leads you to be able to start addressing those or defining those, the invitation is there. It does, this is where, uh, and whoever, uh, the indeed.com person, this is where the language becomes yours. We needed a framework to start from. So this is where you can kind of say, this is what that means to me, and that's the invitation. If we walk out of here and I come show up next time with a portrait of a graduate, and I have the terms communication, empathy, critical thinking, problem solving, adaptability, and learner's mindset, I probably won't have done a very good job facilitating because it need, you need to be able to be empowered to think of those things differently. And then our final group, group one, if you would. So one, 12, 15, I need my, you know who you are. These two rows or columns. Uh, if you would think about the communication and the empathy. Now inevitably, I know what happens. Somebody on that side of the room says, oh man, I wanted to think about this. The first invitation is if you physically want to get up and maybe move over to another table that's a little bit more sparse, the invitation's there. Nobody's locking you down and saying, sit there, do this, number one. Number two, you're having a table conversation about it now. If you want to dedicate some of your uh, intellectual capital to one of these other ideas, the poll's open. It, it, it doesn't discriminate against who's putting what ideas in. I just want to be able to provide a focus so that we're using our time efficiently. So with that, I'll shut up. I'll invite, are there any comments, questions, complaints, concerns, gripes, or criticisms? Yes, ma'am. Nice and loud or I can hand the microphone. Citizen, yeah. That could look different in a lot of schools because some schools experience a lot of, or have a high population of students from around the world and other schools don't. So how does that look different within the schools uh, along with financial literacy as well? Uh, there's a big gap between the types of student population in schools. So how do we make it equitable mm -hmm. to where we're not being redundant or mundane to students who already know some of this stuff and then to students who have never heard of this before. What Lee said, I mean this is almost a conversation of exactly what our student shared. Yeah, okay, sorry. That's almost a conversation of what our student shared with us around different life experiences coming into the space. I agree completely uh, on two points here. So the first one is a conversation, a question was asked, hey, how did confidence, global citizenship, and the third one, uh, ability, perseverance kind of pop up here? Well, I'll, I'll tell you candidly, the, the reason that that popped up or those specifically global citizenship in this moment popped up is because 
on your hopes, dreams, and aspirations that you filled out on night one. Hey, if this is the way the world has changed, what do you hope for all of our students moving forward? A lot of the comments kind of indicated to me that it was about global citizenship. We want our students to be able to go anywhere in the world and be successful interacting with others, leading, doing these type, that type of work. So to me, I heard even though it wasn't a top vote getter, I heard through this process global citizenship resonated here. And the second thing now to your equity conversation is some districts have added anti-racism as their language on here. Some cultural fluency, cultural literacy are other terms that show up. So instead of, uh, maybe instead of empathy, the district, because they've done work in that space, has said, hey, we really need to focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, or cultural literacy. I'm letting you influence that. And I think, well, sorry. And I think your call out is that needs to be considered. The equity piece, in my mind, comes in the strategic planning process when we talk about making these expectations consistent for all children. And the power that you're providing is the input around the design team said so. Any other questions, concerns, gripes, criticisms, complaints going once? Everybody's clear on what they want to do. And again, the invitation, as uh, Superintendent Turner said, vote with your feet. If you really feel compelled, you want to move, that's OK. And just because you're in your seat now and you're focused on one of these areas doesn't also mean that you can't enter the platform and give me your individual feedback as well. So the invitation is there for all of that. I've heard a lot, I mean, honestly, push-pull conversations, questions, legit conversations about these things are happening now, and I'm going to agree with that. And I'm going to come back to the conversation of are they happening consistently throughout the system? Do they need to happen differently throughout the system based on certain things? So how do I capture your feedback? I'm not going to get, number one, every table, I'm hoping, minus one, two, three, so there are 29 minus three, so hopefully we've got 26 responses around one of these areas. In addition to that, since we're over here, I'm gonna start with group one. Is there someone at group one who would like to synthesize what you spoke about? The intent here is not to wordsmith all of it. That becomes tedious and frustrating. The intent is to give the overall glossary, kind of like, okay, here, I say glossary, like overall overarching thoughts about what we talked about at our table. Are there some thoughts from group one that they'd like to share? If not, Superintendent Turner has the power. He has the microphone. He's gonna come and volunteer somebody. And I'm gonna leave it to him who he's gonna volunteer. Thank you very much, sir. We have a volunteer, sir. Yeah, um, my name is uh, Edward Tende. Should I stand? Please, yeah. thank you. My name is Edward Tende. Uh, I'm a community leader. So we kind of talk about communication. Uh, we think um, communication uh, is a key point because they should express ideas in a simple way, like uh, the thoughts or maybe ideas that is, they do have in the simplest way. And then um, I also share like um, the system, like how do we communicate to these kids when they come to school? What is it like when they are in school? Uh, what we teach them, and then the outcome of it. What is it like? Is sometimes what we wish uh, to see in them. So that is uh, one of the points. Should we focus on how we communicate to these kids? Mm -hmm. Should we focus on mm -hmm. how can we change the um, the way that we communicate with them? So for the response to be um, uh, effective. So efficiency, it's the input that we put in them. What is the output of it? So um, well that's the said. point. Thank you very much. And, and I'll say, yeah, a round of applause, please. And I'm sorry, will you say your name again? Because I want to say it correctly. I'm sorry? Your, your name, sir? Edward Tinde. Edward Tinde. Edward Tinde. Edward yes. Tinde. Thank you, Edward Tinde. And I would say, that the response in my, in my eyes in this moment is a yes and response. And I say yes and because at the end of the day, communication is really a two-way street. That what we put here is also about expectations for students and for us. And I'll tell you again, if I have English teachers and social studies teachers and science teachers in the room, there is no doubt in my mind that our teachers are saying we teach communication skills. I mean it. I'm, I'm, I mean that about professional educators. 
the, the opportunity in front of us is not only to talk about how we collect, how we, how we, how we aspire to two-way communication, but it's also to have a common framework for what that means across our building. If I'm a middle school teacher across my team, if I'm a principal across my, in, across my school, expectations that are consistent all the way through. I know our English teachers have expectations for reading, writing, uh, uh, communication, emails, uh, responses that are scaffolded from fifth grade up. But there's not a reason that I, as a social studies teacher, can't support that learning in my classroom, in my building, with the same expectation. And moreover, there's not a reason why I can't say with parents, here's what it means to communicate at our grade in our building with your son or daughter, and here's what we hope for together. Like, like that puts us all on the same team. Fair enough? Thank you, sir. Other observations from group one before our superintendent. I think Bob table goes. 27 right here has something to say. <laughs> well done, sir. Hi, I'm Ryland Bender. Um, I'm here as a uh, graduate of Boone County High School Woo. and also a parent. Yeah, thanks. Um, so we had communication and empathy, but I'll touch mostly on communication that we spent most of our time talking about. And we've noticed that um, really this was all encompassing, but we wanted to add some language around um, digital yes. uh, communication and professional communication, which I think we've all seen in our kids. They're very mature in digital communication, but probably immature in professional communication. So that's probably a gap that we need to address as we look into the future. So it's just something to add maybe into our, into our plan as we move forward. Thank you, Ms. Bender. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just, as I said to Edwardton, I'm going to say to you as well, it's probably a yes and. Folks have looked at communication differently now that we've been on Zoom, Skype, Google yeah. Hangout, these other things. And there are different expectations for how I communicate there. Right. versus how I do this in this moment in time. Correct. And are there lessons in that space that inform what we should be talking about next? Because that's not going away. We're back in person, praise everything. I'm so glad that we're back in person, but those moments aren't going away. Right. And how is it that we can take this experience that we just lived through and, 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 and leverage that moving forward? Yes. Thank you. Well yep. said. Thank you. A round of applause for Ms. Bender. How Coming to table 29. 29, we're on, we're on group two. There you go. Well done, sir. Don't pull it away. Somebody's going to. This is what happens when you get stuck at a table full of parents and you're the educator. Ouch. I think <laughs> what you mean, you have the opportunity to be at a table full of parents. I do. It was actually a great conversation. Um, so the big thing we actually talked about was using the words technology literacy versus digital literacy and the difference between the words technology and digital. Mm -hmm. Because for us, it felt like digital just encompassed more than just a phone or a computer or a tablet. And when we think technology, we think the device and not what's being used. Mm -hmm. Along with both the tech and the financial literacy, incorporating the responsibility, critical thinking, problem solving, a lot of those other words that are in those columns within those things. So all the words really started to blend together for us. Hey, Amen. You're right. Thank you very much. Round of applause, please. What was your name, sir? What was his name? What was his name? I'm sorry, sir. Todd. Todd. Well, well said, Todd. And, and I, I won't pull the standard yes and with you necessarily. Uh, what I'll say that was, was different maybe than Ms. Bender in terms of what was missing is the opportunity about how we're thinking about those things. And if this is going to position us for a year, two years, three years, if this is going to become an aspirational goal, that we certainly don't want to be limited by various platforms or something. We want to be a bit more agnostic. Well said. Thank you, sir. Uh, how about another table here in the critical thinking and problem solving group? I'll tell you, Mr. Superintendent, if nobody else jumps in, table 11 had a lot of thoughts, but I'll, I'll, I'll see if somebody else is willing to talk. Oh, nope, it doesn't look table like it. 11 table 11 it is. It is. They were on fire. See what happened there? Well said. Thank you, sir. So what we talked about in our group. Share, share your name, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Bill Hogan, Director of Innovation here with the district. Oh, okay. uh, one of our parents uh, shared that when we said, when you talk to your students about being a problem solver or critical thinker, what do you say? 
uh, and what do you think about? And her words were, I want them to figure it out. So kind of common language, and I think if we all have kids, we probably told them that. Uh, at some point, figure it out. You had the problem solved. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh, being a self-advocate for themselves. Uh, as they solve problems in their own world, they have to advocate for themselves, whether that's with a teacher, with another classmate. So teaching them how to advocate, and, and, and it goes into communication. But, and the last was being reliant, self-reliant uh, on themselves. So, and, and being able to, to make themselves get through their everyday. So I think, sir, what I'm hearing, your name, you're the Director of Technology and Innovation, your name one more time. Innovation, not technology. Oh, oh, innovation, right. sorry. Director Don't get those things mixed up. Apologize. Everybody does. Apologize. Uh, direct, uh, Bill. Bill, I'm Bill. So, Bill, I, I love what you're doing because you really, you, or you and your table, you're just a spokesperson. It, it, yeah, they did it. They were a lot, okay. Uh, I love what you're saying because you, you kind of thought beyond just these two topics that are maybe listed here, and you said that, that if we're going to talk about critical thinking and problem solving, what that means is really advocating. Now, my question is, and this is a loaded question, and maybe right, y'all ready? Y'all take this down. My question back is, and how many things do we have in our system that are set up to not have the students advocate for themselves? Your grade is due by this time in this 52 minutes before you move on. So. Some of this, if it's going to be rise to the level of importance that we need to do it, it's not as much about also what we're doing. It's just as much about what we need to stop doing in terms of those things. If we really are talking about problem solving and advocacy, then what ways do we give students the chance to be the owners of their own learning? What ways do we provide that? Student-led conferences. That's hey, one. That's, that's what we need one. to add. Hey, and that's not defensive learnings. Small. Hey, defensive <laughs> learnings. Capstone and cornerstone. <laughs> keep rolling. Yeah, and, and I think those are all very valuable, Bill, and, and I mean that, honestly. I just am, and what struck me about what you were saying, not only that you were thinking outside the box, but also that it's the opportunity not just to talk about what else we're going to do, but also a conversation around what we can stop doing that actually impedes those chances. Well said. A round of applause, please, for Bill. It looks like our superintendent has volunteered somebody else. I'm Hallie Booth. Um, I'm an eighth grade science teacher at Ballet Shannon. Um, we also had some thoughts about critical thinking. Look, I'm cheating here. Um, so we had a lot of discussion about how critical thinking and problem solving to, in our eyes kind of went together because every time that you think about a critical problem or a critical concept, you have to problem solve and if it's something that you have to work through. So that was the one thing that we said. We said that it should be um, centered around authentic learning experiences as well as real world um, to really look at what is what are the problems out there now that we have and what are things that students can problem solve along, which I think goes with table, I don't know, 11. Um, just that idea of letting them problem solve and letting them kind of push themselves through the thinking process. We also said, um, is it kind of along what was just said is, do we need to really look at what goes on in that school day to allow them that time and that process time and that exploration time so that they can actually come to their own conclusions and have conversations with each other, which goes to the communication um, through that problem solving. Did I miss anything? Linda, are you sure? Just, Linda really wanted to speak, but <laughs> I, I got, um, we always said that um, the other thing that we talked about is through the communication that more minds sometimes are better than one. And so really allowing that time for those students to sit and process with each other and give pushback with each other as well as the teacher um, to really kind of get their mind and their thinking process started. Thank you very much, Hallie. And I happen to have met her. A round of applause, yes. And she's our science person. As you were speaking, Hallie, I, I was thinking of a book written by Adam Grant that came out last year. And he talks a lot about uh, uh, these P words, being a prosecutor, being a prophet, or uh, being a, uh, um, I forget the third one, or being a scientist. And ultimately, the idea of being a scientist is the one that he was advocating for because it's trial and error. How many times when a student is given an assignment, they say, what do I got to do to get an A, or just tell me what I got to know. Same thing that we want as adults, by the way. Let's not knock students for that because they're like, hey, Listen, Steve, just tell me. I don't want to wordsmith this. Just tell me what we got to do. No. 
The answer is we have to kind of find our way through this by trial and error. What works in one place doesn't necessarily work somewhere else. How do we figure those things out here? And that's based on that feedback. So thank you. Oh, abs to grit. Uh, uh, hey, listen, Angela Duckworth, that's my lady. How about somebody from group three? You see how this works. If we don't hear somebody, superintendent's coming to you. How about somebody from group three? Thank you very much. We have a parent. I remember you from last time, man. Oh, Lord. She's like the lady that doesn't shut up. Um. No, that's not it. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Um, we actually kind of hit on all, um, um, kind of all three, but um, our, you know, we're supposed to be group three. Um, I do want to add, though, real quick to the communication, the thought that we had is um, how to determine which mode of communication to use and mm -hmm. when. Because mm -hmm. um, we kept talking about there's something missing from that. So mm -hmm. anyhow, <laughs> two cents on that. So we were talking about learner's mindset, um, yep. and we found through our discussion that it kind of goes hand in hand with adaptability. Um, one item that we, that we circled on our list here was possess the desire to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Yeah. So, you know, with that, I was telling him, you know, every day in my job, there's something new that, that comes along that I might have learned some type of accounting principle yesterday, and guess what? Today it doesn't apply. We've changed that. Um, so we need to make sure that our kids are understanding that it's okay, you know, to learn new things. Um, and, you know, that goes along with being adaptable, um, to be able to say, mm -hmm. you know, that, um, no, I'm losing track. <laughs> I've got so many things going through this brain. Um, you know, that, you know, that it's okay, you know, to deal with change and, you know, with things that you learn. And, and it's the same thing, too, that we were talking about with, if they don't, don't learn something, you know, right the first time, um, being able to, um, you know, have the opportunity to relearn it and reassess. Um, you know, that's one thing with my oldest daughter at Cooper, um, with Mr. Wilson, is you know, when I sat down with him that I learned that, you know, there's, if they, they do poorly on an exam, they do have the time, the, the opportunity to actually do the work, not just retake the test, do the work, relearn it, and have that opportunity to move, you know, forward and, you know, demonstrate what they've learned um, and not be afraid, you know, to um, be able to move forward with that. So I'm trying to think, was there anything else? Yeah, and, and no, while that, you're thinking about that. All right, that's it, that, I'm shutting up now. Oh, no, 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 no I didn't say that, <laughs> I assure you. Now, while you're thinking that, I, I want to commend you. What was your name, ma'am? Can we give Lisa a round of applause, please? I, I, I think that phrase uh, resonates with a lot of folks a lot of the times, the idea of learn, unlearn, and relearn. And I think it's get, gathering some steam based on the last couple of years. But the point that I would come to is this idea of, and we talked about it in our landscape shift, knowledge is power. In some places, that phrase alone is a little bit incendiary because not everybody had the same access to the same level of knowledge. And today, we've seen a difference in terms of some of that access in, based on what we carry. So it, it, it is, at a minimum, is, that, is causing folks to rethink the idea of, is knowledge still power? Or is it about the utilization of knowledge? Now it comes back to your idea of learn, unlearn, and relearn. Because the way that I access that knowledge can change multiple times. Multiple, and, 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 and can come to me in multiple ways. How do I use it becomes the, the, the key lever for the future. Thank you. And I see that a microphone's already been handed off. Your name, sir? David Fuller. I'm the principal at Thornwild. Um, we, we had a lot of really good discussions. Uh, one of the, the things that keeps resonating with me that we said was there's not a single kid in Boone County that we don't want to have any of these yeah, right. attributes. And right. How do we bring this all together? You know, right. and, and of course, that's what you're going to help us do here. But um, I, the, the first thing that I said, and, and we kind of agreed that for me, something that's missing is creativity mm. uh, within this. And I was looking back through through some of the, the votes and stuff, and it just didn't get the votes that I felt like it should have gotten. So that could be the music side of me coming out. I used to be a band director before I was a, a principal, you know, so. Um, but um, I feel like uh, every single one of those aspects, um, core, the influence, all those things, there has to be a, a sense of creativity within that, or you're not gonna have, we're not gonna have individuals, we're gonna have robots, and we don't want that. We, wanna, no. we want individual students, you know, that's gonna, change our world. There it is again. So a round of applause for our principal, please. And, and maybe that's, 
the right grain size because you, sir, positioned me the best in terms of, of forward progress now, so I, I can move on, but I, I really think it's important to address. Number one, uh, there, there is a group of scholars that say creativity is the differentiator for the human experience. How is it that we take this knowledge and utilize it and continue to apply it in new and novel ways? Good God, I thought when I heard about this TikTok idea, I was going to hate it. And now I watch my father-in-law uh, on this thing, like recipe, all of these different things that he's using it for. And I can see how the value in these bite-sized chunks is taking off in a creative way that I could never have foreseen. And how many more changes like that are going to come? So your point is very valid, not, not that any, very, very valid, sorry. Uh, I well received, I hope that you put that idea in your um, uh, a poll, and I will also admit to one hiccup about the data around creativity. That was one of the words that wasn't at the start of the poll when people in the room were taking it, that was there. It wasn't there. It, somebody notified me of it, and I put it in, I'll say, within two or three minutes. But because it wasn't there at the very beginning, it might be one of the reasons that it didn't make a more high-level appearance. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's a possibility, and I own that. So what happens next is your feedback, again, we're not asking you to define, oh, actually, Mr. Superintendent, anything to add on this topic before we kind of transition? Oh, yes, sir. One more person it is. He had a plan for that. Thank you, sir. So my group said that we should add to the learner's mindset, like, box. My group said that to the learner's mindset box, we should add perseverance <clears throat> and self-slash-school directing because perseverance is one of the big, like, stepping stones to having a learner's mindset, because if you don't make mistakes, then you don't learn, which is one of the, like, things that teachers like to tell us a lot. Also, self-goal directing is important to mm. have set goals for yourself, like if you wanted to get straight A's, you would need to have perseverance, so that you could set, you could make yourself have a, one of those learner's mindsets to get there. What's to your name, Miss? goal. Cameron Parks. Can we give a round of applause to Miss Burks, please? And, and Kara, I love what you did because you did what Miss Bender over here did. You said, Steve, there's something missing here. And I value that so much because I want to get it right for this community. Thank you very much, Miss Burks. So what happens next is the idea is you don't have to sit here and define these things and we're going to wind up with 27 tables of 27 different definitions. What happens is you're providing me feedback. I'm packaging that feedback up. I'm giving that to our superintendent and his team and saying, after all of the things that we heard and we talked about, you take the first stab at running what this means here. You take the first stab, tell us what this means here, because that's what we'd like to put together on a visual, which takes us to our next uh, conversation. In your packet, we have three sketches. I, I want to be really transparent about sketches. Organizationally, pictures have power. So we're kind of making this transition from the left side of our brain and, and data and words and wordsmithing to this right side of our brain because we know that pictures resonate. And as pictures resonate, I mean this very, very candidly. Our scope of work, our promise to the organization is that we'll provide you three sketches based on your input. Now, it's, it was shocking to me, the Florence Yall Tower and how many times people said, hey, yeah, that resonates. Maybe we should think about that. Ideally, I don't know that that Florence Yall Tower necessarily conveys a, a, a unifying message that we want to have in terms of expectations for students, but I heard you. You will not see a Florence Yall Tower on the, on the sketches. <laughs> I, actually, I was worried about saying that because, I, because of how many people put it. I was like, oh, I got some bad news. There's no Florence Tower. But the sketches that you see here are, are really just themes. They represent kind of the themes that we pulled from your work. Yes, I know that they look like they're hand-drawn sketches, and yes, they, that's because they actually are. And in fact, in one of the sketches, it actually, for whatever reason, when we, oh no, it didn't. When we copied it, it looks like it got inverted. Uh, it's backwards, thank you. Uh, and I'm not sure, and I apologize for that, but you know, if you hold it up to the mirror, then maybe you can see that one uh, correctly. But this idea around, you know, do the competencies live on their own? 
and the, the state of Kentucky in the center, and we have like an arrow to northern Kentucky, and we talk about this as a region. Uh, is it something that, no, we want to encapsulate all these and circle it all? Or is it something like a puzzle piece? There was also a person who said something around a compass. Uh, here is my quick word about design by committee. There is no such thing. There is no such thing for a reason, because if you get stressed, uh, or it's like, it's like the bank, it's like our, it's like our uh, gentleman who has the, uh, the basketball bracket. We start rooting for a team. When we start saying, I like option one, we start rooting for a team. And if option one is not the option that's selected, then we feel personally a little bit let down. I assure you I'm going to feel very let down come Thursday and Friday based on basketball picks. So the intent is to say what you might like about these sketches, and that's all they are is sketches, what you might wonder, like, hey, okay, I see it. Maybe the state of Kentucky should be the outer image watermark, and you know these competencies should live in the northern side of Kentucky. I don't know. What are? But it's not going to be the Florence Yall Tower. What are the things that need to be? I like. I wonder. Or what if? And this is an individual poll, but I'll invite you to talk about it at your table. Here's what will happen. Some of you might even get out and start sketching what you think it should look like. That's okay. You can take a picture of it and you can upload it to my platform and then I'm not going to be a degree off. But we have to give my designer some opportunities about what should go along with these competencies to really matter. I gave you the example before. I brought sketches to a district and we walked away with this idea that, Steve, it's really about the head, the heart, and the skills, the actual tangible doing. So the sketch went away and it became a silhouette of a person and we did three people, one from the, like an elementary age child one from like a middle school age child and one from like a high school age child. That's fine. But it was born out of this idea of I like, I wonder, or what if. The invitation now for seven minutes at your table is to talk about that. What kind of resonates? Because really, otherwise we just wind up with a word document of, of, of words and that's not what's going to make change. The change is, is most powerful when it's combined with imagery. And after the seven minutes, I'll invite our superintendent to give us some closing words and then we'll be close to being done. Any questions about the prompt? The prompt is, tell me what works or what doesn't. These are sketches based on the ideas that were presented. What works, what doesn't. I like, I wonder, what if. And if you want to have your individual votes ranked, you have the platform to be able to do it. But I, I was just gonna say, somebody did it. They put the little sleeping emoji on here. I, I'm starting to see the glazed look come over eyes. So, don't do it again. So. Here's what I'm saying. We're about to wrap up, and I recognize that some people will have a burning passion to make sure. Okay, we're getting off this page. Uh, okay, okay. Some people will have a burning passion to make sure that uh, nope. So that some people will have a burning passion to make sure that their input is is captured. I want to do that. That's that's what I promised to do this entire time, and not speak back about. Uh, uh, my information. I got your point. I'm getting, there we go. So the idea is, or the request is, uh, that individually, if you want, please make sure that we capture your information here. Please make sure that we capture your information here. If, if that's not your bailiwick, that's not your, your patch of grass, that's fine too. What we don't want to have is design by committee because that becomes painful for everyone. This is about advocating to the superintendent, and in this case, his leadership team, around, I like, I wonder, what if. We want to marry these two things together. So to end the evening from me to you, I want to say thank you. I think that, that Superintendent Turner helped me with a process improvement, that coming up and asking you to come here has not been the best way to go, but to really be a man among the people and, and, and invite your voice in in that space has really helped, and I've heard lots of laughter. So thank you for that engagement. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for sharing what's been missing. Thank you for making some of the language your own. Thank you for sharing your insights at your table. We'll continue to think about how we move this forward from there. When we come together next time, I'm going to be able to bring you an artifact that can still be revised again, but I'm going to bring you an artifact that should hopefully be a demonstration of where we've been and a vision for students and where we're going. To that end, then we can start to address a lot of these conversations about how, what, what do we need to do. But we'll first celebrate and see if that's going to match what we think it should 
and elevate where that's happening at an exemplar level. That really is what we'll talk about next time. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attendance. I understand from Karen out there that this was the highest RSVP night of the three nights so far. So hopefully we continue that momentum into meeting four. Mr. Superintendent. Let's give Steve a round of applause for his work. Just a couple things, a couple comments or just remarks about tonight. It was just wonderful hearing and seeing the activity in the room. Some of the conversations were so deep and so rich. Really appreciate all the conversation, all the feedback that you're providing. So be sure to continue to enter information in. There is the meeting three feedback survey, so please try to give feedback so we can continue to work on this process. We'll be meeting on group number four, if I'm not mistaken. It's the week after spring break. Spring so break. So you'll be all rested and tan and ready to go. But uh, we have a little bit of time between our next meeting. So we'll be doing some work in the meantime on this process, getting some of the data together and sharing some of that with you if we can before the meeting to continue the process of thinking and working through it. It's going to take some time, but all of your feedback is appreciated and is all being used in this process. So thank you very much for your work. Have a safe drive home.